everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Bookish. Um, I'm Laura Yu, and I'm here with my good friends um, and colleagues, uh, Kofi Adisa and Sylvia Lee. Um, so today we are actually going to be talking about our big reading plans for the summer. Um, and I think that in the past, we have not always had a good track record of summer reading, but we can always plan, right? We have goals. We still set goals um, and we will work hard at it and we'll come back in September and see how we did. Um, so I'm going to start us off uh, with my plans. Um, so I, <laughs> this is very ambitious, you guys, like everybody really needs to rally for me. I picked this book. It's the love song of W.E.B. Du Bois. And it is a whopping, I'm getting to the page number, 796 pages. Um, I think I can't remember the last time I read such a long book, um, but I have uh, read other things written by Honoré uh, Honoré Fanon. Is that how you say her middle name? Maybe uh, Jeffers. Um, I um, her poetry collection called uh, "The Age of Phyllis," where she wrote these um, uh, poems in the voice of uh, uh, Phyllis Wheatley. Um, made such an impression on me and as a poet and I've watched her videos, uh, her lectures on YouTube about that work and so on. And so I'm really interested in this author and in the novel that she's written here. Um, and it's a, a novel about a that focuses on a character named um, um, Eileen and um, working through this family saga, basically going all the way back to slavery. So um, I'm, it's a long book, it's a little scary, but I'm determined <laughs> to, um, and if this is the only book I read this summer, I'd be very impressed <laughs> with myself. So I'm looking forward to reading that. But I do have two other books on the docket, basically. Um, and mainly because they were gifts to me. Um, and so this is me also kind of bragging a little bit. Um, I have this book called Paper Names by Susie Liu. And it was a gift from my son for Mother's Day. So um, I wanted to, and he's been, he's, how long was Mother's Day ago? Like a, a week, two weeks ago. And he's already been asking me, have you started reading it? Have you started reading it? So um, I think he's very anxious for me to read it. So I think that will be a good read for the summer. Um, I also have a copy of Marilyn Chin's new um, uh, collection of poems called Sage. Okay. And um, I'm very excited about this. And also because uh, Marilyn Chin, who I met at uh, Blackboard Poetry Festival, I want to say 2017 at Howard Community College, uh, hosted by uh, with Hoko Polizzo, um, I met her there and she made such an impression on me. And I've written about her on my blog and things like that. And she's one of my favorite poets. And we've sort of become... Um, Facebook friends, I guess. And when the new book came out, she was so thoughtful and sent me a copy um, to the college. And um, I'm so grateful to to know her and to know of her work. So I'm really uh, looking forward to reading reading her new work. So that's my um, ambitious plan. How about you, Kofi? Well, when we were offline, I think I sent you and Sylvia um, a couple of books I was really thinking about reading. I think they were mostly Pulitzer winners recently. And then I looked in my um, my personal library and thought, I really have some books here I would rather read and I probably should read. And so I have three books that I, I, wanted, I wanted to read, so I call them want to read because I've had them for a while and I haven't actually tried to read them. So the first, I think this is uh, Charles Yu's first novel, How to Live Safely in a Science Fictional Universe. And I've had his short stories and I really love the short stories. And we did Interior Chinatown as well. So I wanted to read his first novel. Um, so I'm really excited about reading a, a, a third work from an author who I, I truly admire in terms of his style, his voice, his, his playfulness with language. Um, so there's that. Then I have 
The Thousand Crimes of Ming Su by Tom Lin. Um, I'd had this book for maybe since the fall semester, maybe a little bit earlier. And I read the first page and I thought, man, I want to read this. And I never picked it back up since I read the first page when at Barnes and Nobles. Uh, and then my, my third book is kind of keeping um, this idea about um, space and, and outer space and black holes and dark matter. Uh, the Disordered Cosmos, A Journey into Dark Matter, uh, Space Time, and Dreams Deferred by Chandra Prescott Weinstein. This book was recommended by a colleague, uh, Tim Bruno, um, and he thought because I was reading Stephen Alexander's um, Fear of the Black Universe, he thought this would be a good um, addition. Um, I don't know if all three of these uh, equal up to the page of the love song of W.E.B. Du Bois. They might exceed those pages, um, but I think I'm going to start with something that's probably the challenging work first, uh, because I'm not a physicist and, you know, I have to kind of labor through things that I'm not always familiar with and then get into um, Charles Yu and then Tom Lin. Um, so I'm kind of excited. Uh, I have a lot of things I'm going to be reading this uh, summer and finishing up reading this month and into June. So uh, hopefully when it comes August, I will have something to say about all three books or I will explain why I failed at this again. <laughs> Either way, I have something to say. How? What says you, Sylvia? What is on your list and why? So um, I have a couple of books on my list. I didn't bring any of them with me because as you might be able to tell from my background, I'm in the process of moving offices. All my books are crated uh, until, I, until I move. But um, I do have actually one book in common with you, Laura, that I'm reading this summer or attempting to read. And that is The Love Songs W.E.B. Du Bois because I got it on um, Audible, right? So I'm going to be listening to that as an audio book. And um, to give you an idea, you said it's 790 some odd pages. Um, for listening, the, the estimated time is 29 hours and 49 minutes. <laughs> so the reason why I chose that is I'm, I'll be traveling um, internationally this summer as well. I'll be going to Korea and the flight is about like 14 hours from here to Korea. It's nonstop direct. So I figure I can listen to the first part of it on the flight there and then the second part of it on the flight back. I'll be somewhat of a captive audience. Now that's my plan. Um, I don't know how well it's gonna work because likely I will be, you know, knocked out for like 10 of those 14 hours, I'll be sleeping. Um, but that's sort of my, you know, idealistic plan. So if I can get through that, um, listening to it on the airplane, I'll be thrilled. And I'll let you know how I do on that one. Um, the other book that I was planning to read, um, so I'm keeping my, you know, my expectations minimal here. The other book that I'm planning to read is called Aftershocks. It's a memoir by, by Nadia Wusu, um, who's a winner of the Whiting Award. And her book was selected um, as the uh, Maryland Book Connection book. So there will be a lot of author events. Um, I believe the author will be here at HCC in the fall for the annual Bowder lecture um, talking about her book. So I really try to um, read the book connection book in the summer or, you know, leading up to the fall so that I can participate in the events, but also, you know, encourage students to participate in those events as well. So I'm looking forward to that. And I, I like reading memoirs in general because um, typically if someone's writing a memoir, they've got something unique to say about their life. Um, and then I have several books of poetry lined up, usually um, for my August poetry reading um, challenge. And I'm going to be posting those books on uh, my Instagram and I'll post them also on the um, bookish uh, Facebook page if anybody wants some um, poetry recommendations. So yeah, that's, that's it. I'm trying to keep it low key. Uh, I'm honestly not sure how successful I'm gonna be with the, um, the the love songs of Du Bois because it's just a long book to 
to read, but also listen to. Um, but we'll see. I, I've, I've, I'm, I'm optimistic that at least one of these summers, all three of us will be successful <laughs> in our summer reading like challenge. But you know what? It's okay. No pressure, right? That's the whole thing about reading. You read at your pace. You read, you know, when you can and how you can. So, yeah, that's kind of what's going on. Um, this summer and I kind of to segue into the next piece I wanted to ask you guys as you were um how do you guys think of what to read for the summer because I often get asked for recommendations you know as an English professor from our non-English professor colleagues you know what are you what's on your summer reading list what should I read over the summer and even as I'm moving offices I've been um, taking like stacks of books and like putting them outside with like a sign that says like free books and you know, the other day I overheard someone in the hallway saying like, oh, I love when English faculty move out of their office because there's always like interesting books that they're, you know, leaving behind. You know, and so I went out there and had this conversation. She's like, what would you recommend, you know, out of the, the stack? And it became part of that conversation we've had in the past about, you know, how do you figure out what it is that you want to read in the summer? Like the book connection book is, you know, connected to what we're doing as a larger reading community, you know, not just at the college, but in our community, in our local, you know, county um, and state communities. So that's, that's one kind of line of reasoning that I have for picking the books I did. The other one is, you know, I always try to support and make poetry visible in August by joining another larger reading community, which is um, the Seeley Challenge uh, started by the poet Nicole Seeley to kind of bring attention to poetry. And then, you know, the W.E.B. Du Bois one, you know, I've, I've, I too read um, um, her, her first book, and this is her first, I think, book of fiction. Um, and I was just really interested in the premise of the book, but also um, kind of put it off, like I started it here and there, um, but put it off because of the length. So I figured summer would be the ideal time to be able to read sort of uninterrupted um, and so that was sort of my thinking along those lines. But I'm curious, you know, what? how do you guys come across like your, how do you cultivate, I guess, or curate your reading list is my question. So, Kofi? Yeah, um, I had the, uh, the love songs on my bookshelf for like a year, two years. I mean, I have it in hard hardcover. So I'm pretty sure I got it for myself as soon as it was released. Um, because I knew I wanted to read it. And of course, it's like you're saying, it's the length that's intimidating. And also just kind of flipping through the pages. It's not an easy read. <laughs> it's not going to be an easy read. Um, so I've been putting it off because of that. But like Kofi, I mean, I don't know if that's what you were saying, Kofi, but I have a separate two big bookshelves of books that I own that I haven't read yet. So they are wanna reads, right? Like in the, my aspirational future self wants to read these books. So I have them. And so this, I picked this book off the shelf. And um, I think that I have, when I need to, I feel like I've been in a reading slump um, and I just don't have the attention span. Um, I blame TikTok, I don't know. So uh, I, when I feel like that, I actually tend to look for really short books right like little little books so that I, I can finish it and feel like hey I read a whole book um, so but now I'm going opposite so like a different kind of remedy or situation to rather than trying to tackle multiple books if I if I can finish this one book that I've been really wanting to read um, that's very long I think it'll give me a sense of accomplishment <laughs> and uh, I, I really need that right now to um, hopefully get back into more consistent habit of reading. Um, I miss reading, but I also feel like I haven't been reading a lot. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it's a, it's a combination of things. There are things that I'm reading that are um, tied to what I do as a professor, um, whether that's, you know, reading research or reading, um, you know, certain scenarios within research and teaching and learning. Um, and I, I get some joy out of that. Um, but what I'm trying to do more is balance out the this, this sort of technocratic reading that I have to do that en enables me to be a little more conversant as an academic with things that I actually 
enjoy, um, which, you know, ties more to me as a fiction writer than it does to me being a professor of composition. So um, when I'm when I'm reading fiction or even nonfiction, um, because uh, uh, Prescott Weinstein, uh, uh, her book is nonfiction, um, I read it to see what I can uh, use in my fiction in some ways, because I think the best fiction has some germ of truth in it. And so since I've been operating in science fiction, it, it's probably good to read some science, um, and in particular um, about things like dark matter and black holes and those types of how universes um, are formulated and or constructed, if we can say constructed. Um, so yeah, that's that's sort of my my thinking, and the fact that um, she's a person of color in physics that's also an, um, an alluring reason for me to read it. Um, and I'm just trying to read different kinds of writers to get um, different ways of entering into stories. Um, so it's 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 not necessarily based in the summer, but I think it's because I I feel like I would have a little more time, less grading, uh, in fact, no grading, um, where I can uh, do more of the reading that I enjoy that I can use for uh, my creative purposes, um, as opposed to my academic purposes, which are different, um, yet similar. So that's kind of the reason. Um, I used to get on these, like, I, I tried to read a particular genre at one point. I was reading a lot of crime novels and de detective fiction, um, and that was cool, but now I'm kind of out of that, and I want to kind of understand a little more about uh, quantum physics and, you know, not because I want to be teach a class or do something in quantum physics. It's just I want to use something from that to make whatever story I'm writing. Uh, there's some germ of truth in it. Um, so it's more pragmatic and practical than, you know, I really want to read something that's in quantum physics. Yeah, I don't think Coffee. I've ever heard that phrase before. <laughs> I want to read more about quantum physics. <laughs> I mean, just like in the circles of I want, personally, I don't think I've ever heard that utterance. But, you know, I, I I think there is interest. I'm actually interested in that, too. Let me know how you like it. Um, and Tim, our colleague Tim, always has really interesting things that he's reading. So uh, let me know if, if that's something that, you know, I'll, I'll wait for your Kofi's version of the Cliff Notes on that. And then I'm like, oh, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll read that. <laughs> Kofi, I'm really interested in that second book that you mentioned, uh, some, the, something that was Crimes of Ming Su is what it was. <laughs> is it is it a like a crime novel, thriller, or something mystery? I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, do. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. I don't know if this even. I, it feels like a historical novel. Um, but oh, okay. I really only read the opening page and I'm kind of turning to it. Um, and I, I'm still leafing through. Um, and it was, this was the sentence that kind of got me. For a long time, it's, uh, it had ceased to trouble him to kill. I don't know why that, I'm like, who, who is him? Uh, the town of... <laughs> Corinne was behind him, together with its gambling dens and saloons and bars full of angry men. Not two hours ago, Ming had killed a man, and already in his mind, the memory of it had begun to give way to the fire of imagination. So it's actually, it, it's, it's, it's set in the West, it's almost like a Western, but I'm not 100% sure because I didn't get that far. But I like those sentences, and I thought, I want to read this, and again, I didn't. I didn't go further. So um, it it feels kind of like crumbly a little bit. Um, if, but I don't know how much of it is that. It could be a crime novel. I'm assuming it's going to be a western because the cover looks like a guy on a horse. You can see um, it feels very westernly. Um, 
and you know it makes uh, the book jacket refers to Cormac McCarthy, um, and I'm a I like his work, um, mm. so it may be in that vein. But I have I just really um, I don't know. I can't say for sure, um, and I don't always like reading the background because sometimes it might skew my thinking. Um, mm. But I you know that first couple of page a couple of sentences I'm like oh I gotta read this, um, and then I put it down. <laughs> once I got home. I think that's a really um, interesting idea, maybe for a future show, but like books where the first sentence or the first line got you. Like you didn't read anything else, you just happened to pick it up because I felt that way about um, Jenny Zhang's collection of short stories, Sour Heart, and that first sentence of the first story, I was like, yeah, I'm going to read this. I'll buy it. I'm going to read it <laughs> because the the writing was so good in that first um like in that very first sentence so maybe that's another um maybe that's a topic for a future um episode like what are our favorite first lines of books that we've read um but i love this conversation because i forgot that this is another way that we find our way to curating our own list of things to read is often by asking each other, what have you read recently that's really good? Or what are you really interested in reading? And I think it kind of ties back to the idea that even though people think reading is a pretty solitary um, action, which you know it is, it's you and the, the book, it actually isn't. It's actually very much more communal than I think people realize um, it to be. And you know that's true even if you're not talking to you know, a book club or friends who read even if you're online or you're listening to, you know, a book recommendation from us, for example, um, from our podcast, for example, you're still part of a conversation. Um, it might be an asynchronous conversation, but it is a conversation nonetheless. And I think that that is something that I'm really taking away and appreciating more about kind of the conversations of how do I find my way to good books? You know, I used to think it was me finding my way, but you know, I'm, I'm coming to realize even through our conversations that a lot of it has to do with sharing and talking about things and listening. And um, yeah, I think it's a, I'm, I actually really want to read that book now too, Kofi, <laughs> but I'm not going to add it to this summer. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait to see how you, I'll, I'll wait to see how you like it. You'll be the, you'll be the tribute on that one. <laughs> um, also, you know, that I think the first book you mentioned, Kofi, is uh, by Charles Yu, and that reminded me who we whose book uh, Interior Chinatown we read and talked about. Um, I was thinking about, and I I am I apologize, I never remember the author's name, but Friday Black, the author of Friday Black. Uh, I think that was our first episode. I think when we talked about that book, um, um, and he has a new book out as well. And I've been wanting to read that. And so um, that's another future conversation, maybe doing some uh, reading books, uh, you know, additional books by some of the author, newer books that are, are uh, writers that we've discussed in the past um, are coming out with, I think that might be a really fun discussion too. And I think that's like, once you, that's mainly how I what do you call it? Like have look for look for um, new books to come out by authors that I do like, right? But of course, writers don't like churn out books every year. So, but so it's really fun to kind of anticipate a new book coming out by an author you you, you enjoyed, and um, and I think that might be another conversation too. Like who who's an author that you follow. And then questions about like, have you been disappointed, right? Um, so for example, for years, like I wait for Ann Tyler to uh, release a new book. And I think I've read probably almost everything um, she's written. Um, but I think it's been a while since she had a new book out. So yeah, I think that's really fun. I'm, 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 I wanna hear about how, how you like uh, Charles Yu's book, Kofi. Yeah, I will tell. I will tell. I could. Um, I, I do think that genre plays a big role for me um, in my summer reading. I, I, I try to keep some things connected. And so if I, I don't try to read a, a lot of heavy literary works, um, not because I don't like them, but because they, they really do take um, 
the joy of summer reading <laughs> out. Um, I think I try to read V, I think Pynchon's V um, one summer and I was just like, ugh, uh, this isn't a summer read, this is a fall read. Um, and, you know, I, I think I also was trying to sandwich it between reading Robert Parker books and um, probably Crumbly books at the same time and Lawrence Block books, you know, and, and they just didn't fit. So, you know, I think when I'm curating books or trying to read or come up with a reading list, I do try to keep certain genres that are closely linked together um, and things that are slightly different. I try to read them in a, and maybe in the fall. Um, so like the memoir that uh, Sylvia, you mentioned, and I, that I probably will read that in mid August um, because, you know, I tend not to do memoirs. Um, now, it would be something if Chandra uh, Prescott Weinstein's book is a memoir, but it's set in, you know, the world of physics, then I'll have that defeats everything I just said. Um, but, you know, I I'm, I'm really am looking forward to, you know, these stories that I think will move a little bit quicker than, than her book. Um, but I could be wrong because I have yet to read them yet. Yet to read them yet. I double, double yet. Okay, well, well, so, so, we'll see. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead, Laura. No, you go, you go. I was gonna say, well, we'll see um, when we reconvene for our <laughs> first episode of the next season, how we've done and also our recommendations and for our readers who are listening, um, you know, pick up one of these books and read along with us and, you know, uh, catch, catch up with us on the flip side of summer and see how, one, we did maybe, or it would be funny if our readers were successful and we were not <laughs> um, in completing our list. <laughs> but um, if so, good on you, good for you. We will, like, we will bring you on as a guest, reach out. You know, if you've read any of these books, reach out and we're, we will have you join us in this conversation. Um, but yeah, thanks for uh, tuning in. Laura, did you have anything you wanted to say? No, actually, I was just going to uh, close us up. Um, but I also, I, it reminded me, Sylvia, you said you're traveling, you're going to Korea. Um, I am going to be taking a class and teaching a class. And we have a little one week uh, of vacation in, uh, to the beach in August, maybe. Um, so, Kofi, you have any fun summer plans that you want to share? <laughs> uh that I want to share. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I will be doing, um, I don't know if we're going to be traveling. I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think I will be going to the library a lot. Um, oh. And, and, yeah. And, and doing a lot of stuff. So, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, mix up where I do my reading. A lot of times mm -hmm. I'm at home, but, it, you know, now that my wife is consulting business is going on, um, it can be a little distracting listening to what she's talking about. Um, so yeah, I'd probably be in the library and let the sort of, sort of let the summer be what the summer will be. I do have one um, a get together with a friend of mine who's a professor at uh, George Mason University. And she and I are supposed to sit down and talk about reading pedagogy for all of all things. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's, that's, that's not a summer fun read, but it, you know, it, it's somewhat <laughs> yeah. good to talk to her. She gives me a different perspective on things. And, um, uh, she's recommended some books, those I've read and I recommend <laughs> some to her and, you know, so we're, um, yeah, it's good to get together with people who are, interested in reading and talking about what they're reading. That's always, mm -hmm. and, and to your point, Sylvia, it is very much a communal uh, and situational uh, thing to read. And um, I think sometimes as professors, we forget that part um, when we're teaching, that there's a, it's, it's very much bringing a community of people together under, you know, just one text or these ideas and how they flourish and thrive. So it's, it's, it's a good, I, I expect it to be a really good summer. In sum, <laughs> we will, <laughs> uh, so uh, we will be posting, I will be posting stuff on uh, the, our Facebook page. 
And if you want to get in touch with us um, over the summer, please leave a message on our Facebook page. Um, I think you can also leave a comment on our YouTube page and you can um, find us on bookish.podbean.com. No, I, we always mess this up. <laughs> That's why we're a casual it's, book club. It's just too cash. What can I say? I think it's a uh, bookish, a uh, casual book club. So it's a pretty long name, um, .podbean.com. And um, yes, bookish, a casual book club, .podbean com and on YouTube under um, the Howard CC channel under bookish um, you can also find us on Facebook and yeah leave a comment as Kofi Laura and I track our summer reading adventures um, join us for those reading adventures um, and have a great summer and great uh, you know good luck with your summer reading Godspeed on the reading part and we'll see you. See you. Bye -bye. Take care.